Faisal, I've heard you speak of the uh, fixations of the Enneagram as devils. Could, could you say more about that? Yes, this is a, a very delightful subject. I, I think it's challenging for, for some people, especially religious people. Uh, once I hear, I, I, I don't have the whole knowledge about the uh, names of the devils, that the, in the old time, the Enneagram was, we didn't know about egos or, you know, uh, personality. You know, they said the Enneagram is, is about 5,000 years old and it used to be taught in, in Afghanistan in a school there, you know. And in fact, they said the prophets used to go there and that's why they, they, they brought so much knowledge to humanity, you know, mm. to, that, to that school. Uh, Claude, you mentioned it, if I remember it another time, the name, I will, I will mention this monastery in, in Afghanistan, the old time, 5,000 years ago. You know? And the knowledge was preserved. At that time, they used to call the nine fixations, nine devils. You know? So I remember stuck in my mind the three major ones, you know, the, the three corners, you know, uh, three in the Enneagram is the emotional corner, Six in the Enneagram is the intellectual corner. Nine is the uh, body, co body corner, you know, the embodiment. You know. um, three in the Enneagram is the Archangel Mephistopheles. It's the Archangel of shape-shifting, of actualization, of action, of playing on the stage of existence. This is the archangel now, right? Was created to be this way, to do action in the field of, in the infinite field of creativity, to build, to create, to do all of those things. Uh, the sixth in the Enneagram is the archangel Lucifer, the angel of brilliancy, the angel of knowledge, the angel, the archangel of, of knowing and mind and dazzling and beautiful, you know. And then the nine on the Enneagram is His Holiness, Satan. <laughs> the archangel, Satan, which is the highest of all the archangels. The highest of all the archangels is Satan. His Holiness, Satan before the fall. Now, what does that mean, the story of the fall and all of those things? I'd like to look at it from this perspective. Uh, Sufis say that Satan is the most faithful and loyal being to God. Not Adam, not the human being. Even though God created Adam, and exalted him, the story in the, in the Quran, in the Bible, you know, this is the religious story, and ask all the angels to bow to Adam, you know, because he is the miracle of all mirac miracles and all of those things. And Satan said, no, I'm not gonna bow to him. You made him of clay and I am made of light and I don't bow to, to this, you know. And then God got mad at Satan and said, you know, kicked him out of paradise. Yeah. Sufis so say that this angel, this archangel, has received the most unfair treatment in existence. It's not Adam, because Adam only was, came to later on in paradise, but before Adam was created, Satan was close to God. Satan was the high archangel close to God, in the presence of God, in the vicinity of God, most loyal, more devoted to God. In fact, he is made of devotion itself. He is made, the atoms of Satan itself, made to not to bow to anyone except to God. It cannot bow to anyone. It is in full devotion to God. And it was there in the vicinity of God, with God all, all the time. Then later on, God decided to create this creature, you know, and then set Satan in one of the most difficult tests, you know, the test that really um, le led to failure, you know, 
there is no way to pass this test, you know, which is God asked uh, Satan to bow to somebody else than God itself. Mm. So then by creation, Satan cannot bow to Adam because it's made only to bow to God. So when God said to, to Satan, bow to Adam, Adam said, sorry, I cannot. You know? I can only bow to you. And then God said to him, you defied my word. Because if Adam, if Satan bows to Adam, then he defies his creation. If he doesn't bow to Adam, he defies God's word. In both cases, it's no win. You know? So then he was casted out. What is the story? What does that mean? Let's say the child come as a point of light. And this point of light, you know, get born, begin to cultivate its, its own interests and life and evolution. And then the demigod, the false god, mom and dad, begin to say it bow to us. Little by little, they try in to have this point of light bow to them. But this point of light, by its very nature, it cannot bow to them. It's, it can only bow to itself and to the being. It's in the field of being. You know? So then, little by little, the demand on it to bow to them, to follow their way, to adjust to what they need, to become what the society wants it to be. You know? Little by little, that leads that point of light to fall from the state of its angelic nature into the ego. And it develops a fixation. So the fixation is the devil. There is no devil outside. The devil is with us and the devil is us. We are the devils. We are the nine archangel devils, the fallen angel. And when we realize the conflict that we were set up by the family mission, by the family hall, and we begin to solve it, then the point is liberated from, from bowing to them. And it can retain to bow to its God, to its true nature, and to the great being. You know, it's in union with the great being. And this is how we can liberate the devil, you know, which is nothing but us. We are the fallen angel. I love this story. I love the twist in it about the development of or what the ego is about, you know? And another piece about the ego, since I am at the ego, you know, as we said, the ego is needed, and if the ego is allowed to develop in a healthy way, it becomes a functional capacity of the soul to fulfill its mission and to live and let live. And one time in the, in the Kabbalah uh, stories, it says that when Moses went to the mountain and God manifested, you know, and saw the burning bush and saw the light of God and he was smitten and he was all of those things. He came back from the mountain. He was glowing with the divine light. Mm -hmm. he was so much light that when people looked at him, they covered their eyes. They couldn't look at him. So after some time, he thought, what shall I do? So to make it easier on them. And it's also easier in me. So he created a thin, transparent mask that restricts a little bit the intensity of the emanation of the light, you know. And that mask is called ego. Hmm. The so personality. Ego, yes. It's a transparent personality, resilient, of give and take, capacity. But when it is threatened, it rigidifies, it calcifies, it becomes fixation, it becomes the devil. I love those stories explaining, you know, that's a little bit different from ego psychology, but it's more human. It touches the heart for me. It's a great story. Thank you.